us um, have, are sending us the direct messages. And I especially love the phone calls that we're getting um, and we get to spend that half hour breaks with you. Um, thank you for your patience and many of you who've been waiting to kind of find a half hour break. I think I've filled in all my slots, um, but if uh, you still want to reach out, you can DM me in the Slack channel or write me an email. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, happy Tuesday. Marcel, unmute yourself. Let's uh, please say hello and tell us about all about your uh, new wardrobe for today. <laughs> okay, I just unmuted. Sorry, it's my first time using computers. <laughs> I'm not very familiar with this. Um, hi, everyone. Um, hope you guys are not, you know, getting bored at home. It's been a lot of action here, actually, you know. That's one of the, the beautiful things of being at home, you know, being with the family, too. So I'm very grateful for that. And let's chat about this. I feel like PJ yesterday set it up and then now send it back to you, Joe. Yeah, you got it, man. I am going to bring up a couple of comments and questions that were brought up yesterday because you're right. So PJ at Laundry, um, also Vance and uh, Artie chimed in with a couple of questions that I thought were really good. We didn't have time to answer them yesterday. So this is our topic for today. We're calling this topic, Be a Leader Now. But here's really the big idea. Let me read these questions and see if you can relate. So PJ, you asked this question. You said, how do you guys think we keep our teams motivated and optimistic? Is that even possible? And then Vance had this question. Hey, this is a great conversation here. Thanks, everybody. Curious to know if any studio owners are diverting resources to volunteer efforts. One thing we keep struggling with is finding a way to use our skill set to try and help, right? Like, how do we stay motivated? How do we stay engaged? And then Artie, uh, from Animus, Artie, you had mentioned, we are reaching out and helping clients fill the gap as they transition to work from, uh, to work from home environments, producing short graphics or messages that they can use in social media, jumping online, giving them advice, helping them with hangout issues, just being with them, them there at a human level above, sale, above uh, sales and so forth. So this really got Tim and Marcel and I asking this question of what does it look like in a time like this where, yes, the voices going off in your head are crazy, I'm panicking, I'm upset, I'm nervous, I'm scared, and now you have a, a team or a bunch of clients looking at you and saying, what do we do? What's going on? What do you think? And you're being called on, really, to lead. And you, of course, think, well, I'm just as scared as the rest of you. I don't have all the answers. Should you be open? Should you just tell everyone what's going on? Like, look, we're going broke. We're losing clients. The projects are all being canceled. Or do you just tell everybody it'll be fine? Just business as usual. Don't worry. So, Tim, that is my setup because I know you have you yeah, some great. notes on on just some overall principles of in times like this. How can how can I? How can Marcel? How can the rest of us? How can we step up and and lead? What does it look like? Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> one, PJ, thanks for the question. And, and thank you all for the question. Um, uh, one, I love that we get the questions a day in advance. Sometimes it's so much easier to find the right headspace to answer them. So uh, thanks for setting us up for this. Um, Marcel, I don't know about you. I've been thinking about this for the last day or so. And one of the questions I've been asking myself is, you know, is it real leadership to just tell everybody it's going to be okay? And um, is that what we should be doing and kind of pacifying everyone, giving them an, an optimism, possible optimism, or maybe a clear way is like, when is it false optimism? Where we're saying it's gonna be okay, but we actually don't know and have a level of responsibility. That's kind of what I've been thinking. How, how about you? What, what kind of thoughts have been going through your, your head? Well, in my, in my head, I'm with you. I feel like, you know, some of these vague answers is not, is not gonna help anyone, you know, because it's just like boilerplate, I would say. You're just like telling, oh, it's going to be fine. It's going to be all good. But I think it's like, uh, I go back to what we were talking to him. It's like empowering our team, you know, and make them feel that they are like smart. They're part of like, you know, they're part of this, this, you know, this team and we're doing this together. And it goes back to what we were saying yesterday, making sure that everyone is also like accountable too, you know? So I've been seeing a crazy motion, even like at, at state, um, 
we've been talking a little more. We've been talking like even like solutions or things, things that we need to do, or you know, a little, some of the other some of the procedures that we always wanted to apply at the studio. Now I can see that we're like you know working towards that. But I, I go back yeah. to like you know making sure that they are like you know the the work on the self esteem of your or your team and making sure that they're like you know they feel that they're part of this this whole situation too. With you. <clears throat> yeah, I I think that's like I walk away with you a little bit is that you know we're in a way as leaders and you know most of us so we could say are like self appointed leaders. You know, we kind of voluntarily uh, decided to get involved in this. Oh, look at someone just turned the light for me. Um, uh, we just voluntarily decided to own a business and get involved in this industry, in this sector um, from our past, ex past experiences. But that unique role we have at our company is to kind of keep the ideas moving forward. Um, and in a, in a way, like we, there is something that we know is true when we give out that optimism to our folks, isn't it? Like we, I'll say like this. I think the words that are in my head is um, your team is part of this. They're, they're part of the smartest and most talented people on the planet that you know. And in a way they need to know that when, when you're talking to your team, as you give them the projects that they're working on, as you give them advice in the field, you've always brought them on in that capacity. So in a moment like this, um, and the moment where you might be questioning yourself, the reality is, is that they still are that talented, smart, and capable person. Um, I almost want them to own that reality for themselves. Like they should have confidence first in their self, knowing that they contribute to one of the, the best companies on the planet. I agree. Uh, I think PG just raised his hand. Well, let's put PG on the conversation. Oh, that'd be awesome. Hang on a second. Let's yeah. get him to chat allowed to talk pj are you with us mr pj yeah we can hear you man awesome what's up guys good to hear your voice pj dude it's great to have you yeah, present well. conversation. thanks for the uh the question yesterday how, how are you processing this i mean obviously you asked the question but have you been thinking about ways to keep your team encouraged and motivated without so shall we say blowing smoke up their skirts yeah, I think it's a lot of, of exactly what, you know, what both Marcel and Tim are saying, which I found myself like, let's see, I think the best way to describe it is like, we're, we're, not, in, we're not trying to invent new things here, like new mechanisms or new behaviors. It's almost like it's a magnification of everything we should be doing already, and, and then encouraging the teams that they are awesome or to just keep doing what we always do and, and kind of hold the line a little bit and not like kind of get freaked out and scatter. Kind of yeah. I, I love that PJ. Cause that's uh, it really goes down to like they, who you are as a person hasn't changed at all from day to day. Right. So no. your ability and capability, what their concern might be is, Hey, is there still work to do or have my, have the plans changed around um, the way we're going to execute things? Um, and in some reality, don't you deal with that on a, on a day and weekly basis anyway? I mean, there are yeah, constant changes in plans to projects as you go it, along. That's exactly right. Is it's like, it, like Marcel was saying, it's not, it's not going to be okay, but it's, you know, the world's not going to end. It's just we're going to have to do what we always do, but probably a lot harder than we've had to do it, it, it feels like, yeah. um, which is... I think that's the truth more so than it like being like the end of motion graphics or that this is all going to be perfect and our poor one guys are going to be awesome in two weeks or whatever. I don't think either, like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's like that black and white, but I think we're just going to have to all be a lot more intensified on everything we do, at least in the parts, hopefully not the bad parts. So PJ, what are you relying on? Um, now, when when a question is asked or the, the the moment of stress is coming out, what are you relying on as a like a solid point that you can reflect to, and then give back to your employees? I think consistency. Like I think it is probably the one sort of if I could say it at a top level. Like like we do all of our sales meetings every week when we say we're going to do them. Same with our financing, with our production meetings. Like. I think having that 
consistency that's similar to how it was before we were working from home it seems to be resonating well with people. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, yeah, I love that. But it would go to one of my my second point here that I would want to make is is I would want the owners or an owners employees to kind of cross pollinate so everyone can own the same vision. Um, so when you're doing a sales meeting, they can hear the sales that are coming in and the opportunities are still alive and working. Um, if yeah. they're part of the production meeting, even the creatives that might not have been in production meeting in the past, they can participate and hear that we are busy and still have a lot of work to do. Um, and maybe plugging them in and allowing them to take some of that ownership in those, um, those meetings might kind of keep the ball rolling for them. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I think, I think, that's, I think that's how you keep people motivated is by just constantly revisiting that conversation. It does have to change a little bit. Like Marcel and I were having a little sidebar thread on um, Slack earlier where it's like you, you can't, like, look, we gotta, we want to, and I think we all want to keep busy, and I think that's one of the biggest fears in all this. But you can't, you can't pretend like we're not in this situation that we're in, and just email people and be like, "Hey, what's up? We want to yeah. buy some of some graphics." Like, it's like, I mean, I couldn't be the more wrong way to go about it. Marcel, what are you doing at your place to kind of uh, give your team ownership over the process and have some visibility in the opportunities that come in the house? Yeah, I think my main key, my key point here, Tim, is I've been seeing since this whole thing started is the word that comes to my mind is transparency. You know, you don't want to be, you don't have to be the guy who is bringing all the solutions, you know? You have to be motivated and, of course, transparent. Like yesterday, for example, I had a, I had a chat with my art director um, for about 30, 30, 40 minutes because I was putting treatments together, you know, and she was working on something else. And then I noticed that she was sort of, sort of like out of the loop. And I said, hey, you know, she reached out to me and I said, hey, let's jump on a call. And I was very transparent with her. I showed her every treatment that we were putting together, all the opportunities. And man, you can see like just the, the vibe, it changes a lot. Even though if you don't have those things coming up, it's like, how do, we, do I keep those procedures? You know, like for example, I can, it's funny because since this whole thing started, I've been actually busier, not with, not with work, just with ideas, you know, like how to keep my team motivated. Is there like a personal thing that we always wanted to do, like internal project or, walking my 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 team through like everything that i'm thinking about you know maybe just yeah. throwing bullet points of thoughts and let people expand that with you so, so that actually brings you know like activity i, I would say I, I remember pj and i during one of those those uh dinners that we had and then pj was saying something about the momentum you know that it's so hard to build momentum right with your team and wh whatever you're doing and then I think that this is the same exercise. It's just like building the momentum and just keep going. You know, put, a, put some bullet points, put some ideas together, share that with your team and let them bring ideas to you as well. You know, yeah. it's just when they feel that they're part of this, it's just like you can, you can feel the response almost like automatically. So let me get I, I couldn't agree more with that. Like that's like so right on. Like, and it doesn't have to be just creative. It could be sales. It could be organizing your server like you just got to keep moving and trying and experiment I mean, you got to do that on a good day anyways we do but like you just have to keep trying things and just not basically anything but sitting there worrying about uh, the fate of the world otherwise you're worried. it's just going to be uh not good well tell me if you guys would agree with this too if you're going to have that meeting especially if you're going to be vulnerable uh, marcel or say transparent um, my advice is, is to make sure you have a very clear agenda. I, I, you know, I'd want that meeting to still be optimistic so that not everyone, it's not just an open meeting when everyone shares their feelings and let the negativity draw it down. Have some clear agenda of what the meeting is about, what you want to communicate, make sure everyone is on the same page, and then add some opportunity for dialogue so there's clarity. But uh, if you kind of just put the team together and it's a round robin people talking, we all kind of know that those things fall apart. 
Um, so the leadership role there is to kind of still keep it nice and neat and tidy as you're having those open conversations. Yeah, I agree. And then it's like, um, the, the, the way I've been doing, it's pretty much I set the subject too. And I say, hey, do you have 15 minutes just to talk about this? And then I Perfect. share some thoughts. And even like smaller meetings, you know, too. So you don't have to put everyone in a call. Maybe you have like a, maybe like, you know, a few meetings of like 15 minutes just to walk people through what are you thinking, what are you seeing? Or even if it's like, you know, like one idea, share that idea and just see what can other, because some other people can, you know, some of your team can bring some ideas to you as well. And then that keeps flowing. And yeah. I think Joe has something to say. I was just going to say, I've been, uh, Tim, you know, I've been studying a little bit of Shackleton off and on over these past, this past week, because Ernest Shackleton was this explorer that tried to reach the South Pole. They got stuck in ice and the power of routine was something that really maintained his crew. But I love this quote I just found from somebody that was asking about Shackleton's view on optimism because of that word. And it said that uh, Shackleton called optimism true moral courage. He surrounded himself with optimists and managed to keep the tenor aboard the endurance, his ship. Uh, the disaster is surprisingly upbeat. It's not easy to be an optimist on an ice sheet. Can anyone relate? And it's even harder to make other people optimistic as well. But no matter the difficulty, Shackleton cultivated an optimistic outlook and communicated that to his crew. So I'll drop this in this whole article in the, in the chat here. It's pretty cool. Some of the principles of just how he was such a strong leader in the face of incredible adversity, because obviously everyone was probably going to die in that situation that they were trapped in, but he was somehow able to keep it, people's hopes up. And that hope and optimism, I think, translated into their survival. So there might be some lessons there that people might want to glean. <sighs> Yeah, Joel, I, the, the Stuckdale principle we talked about last week, or Stuckdale paradox we talked about last week when we did our live feed, uh, what you said reminds me of that. And the idea is this, you can communicate to your team that you know things are going to be different. Um, but you also need to communicate to them that just because things are different doesn't mean it's bad. In reality, that difference will also make you stronger. And that's what your hope is as a leader of them is to to allow them to know with confidence that we will get through this. And by the when we get through, we'll be stronger and better for it. In this time of disruption, there's also opportunity that we want to be available for and be willing to pivot. So I call it strategic flexibility. You want to be able to think through all new opportunity will be available and, and pivot. And the clarity of your vision allows for them to understand how that engagement would take place of your vision in the, in this new, um, um, you know, new landscape. Yeah. Um, here's, I, dropped that's the the, uh, I dropped the quote in the chat there. It's such a, uh, it's such a good one. You have to have faith that you will prevail in the end, regardless of the difficulties. And at the same time must confront the brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. So there's that strange, how can you do both, both of those at the same time? It's a paradox. Yeah. It's a great paradox. PJ, thank you for this question and joining us. You're uh... yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. I've been, I've been logging in the past few days. It's been really, really helpful to, to hear from you guys. And thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it. A lot of people appreciate it. Thank you for saying that. And we appreciate you and all that you're doing out there and your feeds and all the kind of positive attitude you have going on. Um, it's nice to have leaders out there and owners like you. Um, I'm sure there are other people watching this that would like to reach out to you. So I'm sure you're available on the Slack channel too, if you have any questions, right? Yeah. Anytime, anytime at all. I will, I mean, yeah, I'll answer as soon as I can, but I, I would love nothing more. Thank you, my friend. All right. Talk to you guys. Thanks, Tim, I, I wanted to mention that one of like, I love what you said yesterday about that concept of 100% of your worst days is it already in the past man that is actually an injection of you know excitement because you're like oh i don't know i, I feel like we all I, I think thais was explaining me this whole concept of like suffering because of the future you know because most of us were this level of anxiety because we're trying to understand what's what's in the future right and yeah. that causes like a lot of problems so you're always living in like in the future mode and I love when you brought that up yesterday about the, this concept of like, okay, I already lived all of my worst days already, you know? So 
I don't know what's coming up. Maybe from here it can just like, you know, be all new. I yeah. love it. That's like an injection of like, you know, excitement. Thank you. Well, I'll say there's a part of this that I heavily depend on my own faith and knowing that there, that I'm in good hands, that God is in charge, and there is a great thing about to come. Um, and I, I believe the moment we're in today is the moment that has prepared us for that future moment. So we're, we're always afraid of the things we don't know, where we can't see and how far down the road the, the issues really are. But what we do know is how we got to where we are. And that preparation for this moment is what we have and what we need to rely on to get us past, past any hurdles ahead. Um, there's a, a book I've been reading from um, what, uh, this, uh, this uh, heavy investor guy uh, named Ben Horowitz. Um, I love his, his feed, his podcast. Um, and he talks about like focusing on the road, not the wall. Um, and it's the idea of a, of a race car driver when they're, when they're focusing at 200 miles an hour around a curve, if you're looking at the wall, you'll hit the wall. But if you look at the road, you'll stay on the road. And the reality is like we, we all know where we're going and we know why we're, we got into this, this companies and in this career. And we have a sense of what it means to be successful or carry this career out. Let's focus on those. The, the rest of the world is going to have an impact in, upon us. And as we have to like be nimble and, and kind of navigate through the, the terrain, the reality is like, if we focus on the road, we'll be focusing on our future and are the part of the future we need to worry about and kind of let the rest of it go away. Um, so that headspace to, to know that we can get there, that's the one we want to start with. I was going to throw out a couple of uh, like practical things just to think about as we're talking about leadership. Yeah, be quick, because uh, right? we do want to give a little time for some questions that we've got. Sure. Yeah, my first one is, is uh, language is contagious. So. Think of it like that. So positive language or negative language, whatever you put out there, that's what's going to catch on. Um, so you, if and you're the leader, so what you're saying is what other people are going to grab and pass on from person to person. Um, so use your language, be wise and be specific, but also be positive. Let the positive messages carry forward. And that's in people's care and the thoughts, encouraging them, uh, watching the work that they're doing, um, and even your own outlook on things. I know my outlook has changed a lot this week um, from, from last week to this week because I know now a path ahead. And I have enough data to look at the terrain. I know some people are thriving still and are picking up steam while others are, are kind of dealing with critical issues and they're navigating through it. But 100% uh, of the conversations I've had, we've been able to make a plan and get to the other side of it. And that optimism that comes from that positive conversation has been great. Um, my next, my next uh, piece of advice is to stay connected with your vision. You know what your company is about, you know who you are, and nobody can take that away from you. So passing on the ownership of that vision to others, that's what leadership is about. So be clear with your vision so that when you're talking on the call, when you're having your sales meeting, production meetings, even just your daily check in, checkpoints or dealing with critical issues, know who you are, make sure it's clear to yourself, to your clients, and to your employees so that everyone is on the same page and believes in that. Um, and then lastly, really practical, take care of yourself. Everyone's communicating like this now on camera and uh, people are looking at you and in your bedroom and your kids playing in the background or whatever. If you're not taking care of yourself, the people will see that and we, we're more visual creatures than, than audio creatures and what we see, we're gonna believe. So take care of yourself, keep up with your daily routines, take a shower each day, get dressed in the morning. I just got off a call with one of my clients. He looked great. And I swear the whole conversation was so positive because you could tell like he's, he's going to work. Nothing has changed. There's a little bit of a camera between us and that's it. Um, so take care of yourself. Be smart that way. Um, we do know that there, there are some people that are, are sick, are going to be sick. And they also want to see that you're healthy and you're strong and their leaders are in place and doing the best they can to take care of them. That's Those good. are my three takeaways. I love that. I wish I could get a haircut now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, Marcel. I was thinking, although I have to say, I've seen more beards on people over the last uh, four or five days. And I mean, this, the Corona beard is what's going to come out of this thing too. Hey, should we should we open for some some uh, questions? Jules? Yeah, there's um there, there actually were like three or four questions regarding uh, cash flow and loans, which I, I I dropped into the chat here because I think we should devote 
a half hour maybe tomorrow to cash flow, uh, Tim, if you think that's a topic worth. But does anyone have any questions or comments about this leadership question and how to maintain this sense of optimism? Of course, feel free to drop it here and I'll, I'll uh, pass the questions along to either Marcel or Tim. Uh, oh, I should make the, uh, my announcement, Tim. Do you think since we're almost out of our half hour, should we do a couple of quick announcements while people come up with their questions? Yeah, of course. So I am signing up. You met, for those of you that attended the Managing Uncertainty live stream that we did last week, uh, last Thursday, um, I offered to send you a link to this module I have about a sales pipeline. And there was so much response. I said, you know what, let's just share that module live. So what I'd like to do on Thursday is after we get through the, the daily briefing, um, I'm just going to continue the live stream on and present that module to everyone here live. So that way, not only can I go through it with you um, in person, but I can even take questions and we can have discussions and so forth. Uh, for those of you that know me, a, a, a sales pipeline is one of my favorite ways of managing all of this feast and famine cycle. So I would love to give all of you a little tutorial on how to set up a sales pipeline and how to have a sales routine around that. And I loved what PJ was saying. One of his routines, right, Tim? Every week we do our sales meeting and he's there on time and Tony's there on time and the rest of his team, they show up and they're ready to keep at it. Um, yeah, routines are so important. And we want you to keep up with those routines. If you don't have a production list already in place for something you're working off of, um, make sure you just open a Google Sheet, type down your projects, get a sense of the start dates, the end dates, um, maybe how you're doing on the project financially if you have that visibility. Um, but start creating a, 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 a easy way of checking in on people. That way it doesn't feel so scattered for yourself and your um, producers and other employees know that they're communicating well with you. So here's a couple quick comments um, and a question too. One, I love this comment that Masha uh, from Creative Mammals, hello Masha, uh, just shared. Hey, she Masha. said, we got a great tip recently to connect, connect with your team. Just see how everyone is doing. Connect on a personal level uh, or connecting on a personal level is so important right now. We are all in flux, but the conversation should not only be about business. I love that. You remember uh, we were talking with Jay at Giant Ant, Tim, and he talked about every day on our team call, I just put a question out that everyone has to answer. So it's not just, yeah. hey, who wants to talk about, uh, you know, what they, what they dreamed about last night? No, everyone has to answer the question. And it's a way to stimulate engagement and build a sense of we're all in this together. Now, here's a good question from Chrissy. Uh, she asked, how can someone who isn't normally in a position of leadership at the company still step up to help during this time? You want to help oh. your team, but you don't know where to start. I mean, wow. I, that's a really cool question. Tim, uh, Marcella, you guys want to take a crack at that? That's a great question. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, it's just like, you know, as a leader, you should be always listen to your people, you know? So probably as a leader, you have to create that comfortable zone that people can reach out to you. You have to be available. And again, Tim, that all goes back to the, to what we talked about, the most interested person in this whole thing is the business owner, right? So he has to be interested in hearing all the people and the thoughts. So it's pretty much like you creating that com comfortable, you know, zone that someone can reach out to you and you're going to listen and, you know, have people, you know, be available for people to come to you with those ideas. I think it's just creating that exercise of like, Hey, you can come to me, I'm gonna to listen to you. And don't be there for, especially now with like, you know, webcams and stuff. And if someone from your team wants to talk to you, just pause for 15, 20, 30 minutes and listen, you know, and just be there. And, and you know, don't be like, okay, I can talk to you and be doing some other stuff. Yeah, um, I love the question because leadership, I believe is in the heart, less about the, not always about the position you take. Um, and for, for some of us, we're in a situation where we'll say like the appointed leaders aren't necessarily guiding us or giving us that direction. So there is a need to step up. Um, so first of all, I want to give you permission. Like if you know there's something that needs to be done, just feel free to do it. Um, there's probably a conversation that you want to have or need to have with others um, so that they can understand what you're doing. and can be received by them. I, I give you that permission as well. Have those conversations. 
Um, I, I think you respect the authority that's in place because there's, there are bigger picture items that you might not be privy to. Um, so the trust of the leadership that are in place and the, our ability to get through um, is sometimes necessary. Um, but lastly, I'd say like it, when it comes to matters of the heart, you always have to know that you are the principles that drive you personally are the ones that you want to rely on the most. And I think leadership comes from those core principles that we have been taught all along, understand that are true and, and help us become the, pe the person we want to be. Um, so as you drive yourself forward, you're going to drive others forward naturally. Um, so I, th I think your question is, is like, if you weren't already appointed that, let's say within a position at a company, how can you lead? Let's say be yourself, um, put yourself out there, be strong in that, in those ways. And then, um, you know, pass on direction, vision, and purpose to others. That's what leadership's about. Um, in a very practical way, feel free to always re reach out person to person and have your own kind of core group that you are talking to, having conversations and relying on each other. Yeah, I appreciate this comment from Masha. She chimed in again saying, if you're not a leader, that does not mean you can't contribute to building a foundation and a structure. Coming up with a plan and, a pro and problem solving together is so key. And yes, don't wait for permission. I think that's, that's probably my favorite little nugget. Don't wait for permission, right? Just err on the side, a bias towards action. Um, keep, keep, just keep stepping up and showing up. That's so much of what it takes to move forward in times of uncertainty. I often call it uh, making progress despite ambiguity. <laughs> You've heard me say that. Yeah, once. perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, this is, we're at that half hour point. So um, Tim and Marcel, I'm gonna briefly mention that tomorrow I have a working title for our session tomorrow. Here it is, ready, Tim, what do you think? Cash, loans, and visibility. Oh, great, <laughs> that sounds perfect. So, we'll talk about that. Only half hour? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no pressure there. And then on Thursday, here's my working title for Thursday, selling in a crisis which is a controversial title because of course we would never be so rude and insensitive as to be selling in the midst of a crisis, but actually we will. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk all about that. So that's my moment to say thank you, Tim, Marcel. Uh, I want each of you to please uh, sign off and, and say, your, say your goodbyes uh, as we prepare for another day and getting back here tomorrow and on Thursday with everyone. Awesome. Uh as always, it's good to be with you all. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks everyone for being with us. And I would say don't check the news too much. You know, that causes a lot of anxiety. I think Thais, you know, gave, gave me like a nudge yesterday. She's like, stop checking the news all the time. You know, just relax a little bit. And I thought it was so brilliant. So I wanted just to leave, you know, the session today and say, hey, it's okay stop checking every five minutes, you know? <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, thanks again, everyone. I appreciate right. everyone who shows up every day for these, uh, these daily briefings, and we will keep them coming as we get through this together. So stay strong, everyone. Stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Bye.